Well, hi, and thank you very much for joining me today. My name is Ben. I'm a physical therapist. I've been in physical therapy for over the past uh, 25 years. I currently work as a home health physical therapist in the city of uh, Huntington Beach in Southern California. Today, I want to be talking about nonspecific back pain. Nonspecific back pain is simply when you have back pain, but there is no cause behind it. You could be having back pain, but there is no disease, there is no uh, tumor, there is no fracture. There is no disc herniation that could explain why you have back pain. About 95% or more of people who have back pain fall under this classification. It's quite likely that if you have back pain, you fall under the category of uh, non-specific back pain. Today I want to be talking about uh, this uh, technique called uh, static stretching. Static stretch, stretching, as the name implies, is simply when you stretch a muscle or a group of muscles, but it's done statically, it's not dynamic, there's no movement, there's no motion. Let me give you a simple example. If I want to stretch my anterior forearm muscles right here statically, all I need to do is straighten my elbow, grab my right hand with my left hand, and pull my wrist down and back. My anterior forearm muscles are being stretched currently statically, there's no movement. If I do this to a muscle or a group of muscles, for over 15 seconds at a time, three things happen. First, we have this uh, mechanoreceptors called the Golgi tendon organs, which are located in the uh, tendons of the muscles that will send the signal to the central nervous system, telling it to completely relax the muscle. That way you can stretch that muscle to its maximum length. The key word here is uh, uh, relax. If you can get a muscle to relax, the tension drops, the pain drops as well. Secondly, when you stretch a muscle or a group of muscles for more than 15 seconds at a time, your body releases this uh, chemicals called growth factors. Growth factors uh, have uh, multiple beneficial roles throughout the whole body. One of their functions is to act as anti-inflammatory agents. So when you stretch your back muscles, your body releases growth factors that will travel to your back muscles, tendons, and ligaments, decrease the inflammation, that way the pain goes down as well. Thirdly, last but not least, when these growth factors are released, they play a very important role in the uh, healing and repair of the damaged tissues throughout the whole uh, body. When you have chronic back pain, which is back pain that has lasted more than uh, three months at a time, you are gonna end up with some microscopic tears in your uh, muscles, tendons, and ligaments. So, by uh, sending these uh, growth factors into your back, your microscopic tears are going to be repaired. This way you get rid of one of the biggest reasons behind your back pain, but also the main reason for your pain chronicity. As you can see, the science behind the static stretching is very, very strong. I can personally vouch for it because for the past 25 plus years, I've been stretching my back religiously. I do it twice a day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. It's been a game changer. I have also helped many of my patients who continue to still enjoy the benefits of static stretching. So what I want to do now is invite you to join me so I can demonstrate how to use static stretching. Thank you for joining me again. What I'm going to do now is uh, demonstrate this static stretching uh, technique for your back. Uh, first, make sure you are sitting or lying down on a rug, a carpet, a regular carpet, or use a gym mat. It's going to be more comfortable for you. So without further ado, since a uh, picture is worth a thousand words, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate straight. I usually like to start by rolling my body back and forth. Well, you get the picture. I do this about a dozen times. You can do this for 20 to 30 seconds at a time. What this does, it relaxes your back muscles and you get a little bit of uh, massage as well. The next stretch is called the hamstring uh, stretch. What I like to do, you lie down. My right knee is bent. My left, I grab my left lower extremity, which is straight. I pull it back as far as I can, or as comfortably as I can and I hold it here for anywhere between 20 to 30 seconds. That Make sure that you relax completely and hold this position without moving back and forth. And you hold it for 
anywhere in between 20 to 30 seconds. I have done this for up to a minute at a time. More than a minute does not seem to do much. Then I switch position. So remember, my left knee is uh, bent. My right lower extremity is nice and straight. I'm going to grab this with both hands with a straight knee on the right, and I'm going to pull back, and I'm going to make sure that I'm going to relax as much as I can, try to relax the whole body. That's so 20 to 30 seconds at a time, and then you put it down. The second is also a hamstring stretch. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to straighten my right leg. I'm going to bring my left lower extremity up like this. This is a little more challenging than the first stretch. And I'm going to hold this again, and I'm going to count slowly up to uh, 20 to 30 seconds at a time. And make sure to relax also. Switch around, straighten your left uh, knee, grab your right, right lower extremity as straight as you can. You hold it nicely, stretch as far as you can, 20 to 30 seconds. That's the sweet spot again. And you do this gently, relax your whole body. Good. So that's the hamstring stretch. Now, what we have just done is stretch the long muscles that run up and down the back. What I'd like to do now is show you a couple of stretches so that you can stretch the muscles that rotate our trunk, like so. So the, the first is a back stretcher. What I usually like to do, I'm going to put myself in this position so you can see better. My right leg is nice and straight. My left uh, lower extremity crosses like so. And then I'm going to twist my body this way. Look at my right elbow. It's against my, my uh, left knee. And I'm going to twist as much as I can, as far as I can, but still as comfortably as I can. This position I want to hold for anywhere between 20 to 30 seconds at a time. Again, okay? And this is it. I want to turn around, switch things around. So the left leg is straight, the right lower extremity crosses, and I twist my whole body to the right. I push with my left elbow against my right lower extremity. And here it is. Remember, 20 to 30 seconds at a time. You hold it as comfortably as you can. You try to relax as much as possible. Now, what I'm just doing is stretching my uh, middle and upper back muscles. In order to stretch the lower back muscles and the hips, this is called the, uh, uh, the hip and low back stretcher. Very simple. You lie down. I'm going to cross like so. My right hand is stretched over this way, and I'm going to pull with my left hand as much as I can and hold it in this position. With this stretch, we hit two spots. We have the sacroiliac joint, which is right around this area. By doing this, we open the joints and bring a little bit of relief. The sacroiliac joint is responsible for about 25% of low back pain cases. So this helps in that sense. And then right here, you've heard of sciatica. We have a muscle that's a flat muscle shaped like this that lives right here. And it lays on top of the sciatic nerve, which travels from the spine down this way, all the way down. So when the spiriformis, the muscle gets irritated or the sciatic nerve gets irritated, your pain it usually starts here. So this is what this does, it stretches the piriformis stretches your, your whole hip, and you get some relief with that. I want to switch around, same thing here, cross, push down with the right hand. See my left hand is stretched all the way back, and I'm going to hold this position again for 20 to 30 seconds at a time. You can still go up to a minute, but I don't think it'll make a, a huge difference, and you're doing this as comfortably as possible, okay? Now the last stretch, I call the plow, it's P-L-O-W, very simple. I'm going to lie down, straighten both my lower extremities and go as far as I can or as comfortably as I can. If this is all I can do, this is all I'm going to do. Then again. 
20 to 30 seconds, you know the drill. So you've just seen, this is a very, very easy and simple routine that anybody is able to do. Uh, we just did 10 stretches. This will take you five minutes. You can really do this in five minutes easily. 10 stretches. You stretch for 25 seconds, a stretch, and then take five seconds to switch position. That's 30 seconds per stretch for a total of 10. 300 seconds is exactly five minutes. Hi, when we are under stress, our breathing pattern changes for the worse. Instead of taking deep and relaxed breaths, we uh, resort to taking short and inefficient uh, breaths. All this does really is reinforce the uh, stress response in our body. Since pain is a major source of stress, when we have back pain, our breathing patterns also deteriorate. Recently, scientists have been able to um, pinpoint the real cause behind uh, uh, non-specific back pain, which is uh, specifically the loss by the brain of the ability to coordinate the actions of the core muscles, namely the abdominal muscles, the back muscles, and the pelvic floor muscles. What happens in this case, these core muscles do not work well together. They uh, fire erratically and tire prematurely. The diaphragm is mainly known as uh, pr the principal uh, breathing muscle. It is located right in here, underneath the lungs, and on top of the abdominal cavity. It's a, f it's a thin muscle. It's shaped like a dome, basically, like so. When you breathe in, your diaphragm contracts and it drops down and flattens like so. What this does, it allows the lung to expand completely and get filled with air. It also puts pressure on the uh, abdominal cavity and increases the intra-abdominal uh, uh, pressure. When you breathe out, the diaphragm recalls and relaxes back up like this, goes back to its original uh, shape of a dome. When you breathe in, when you breathe out, it relaxes. Uh, since the diaphragm is known as a, mainly a breathing muscle, it is also a postural muscle by virtue of the fact that it's attached to the first, second, and third lumbar vertebrae. So when the diaphragm is activated, it acts as a spine uh, stabilizer. However, in people who have uh, back pain, the uh, diaphragm also loses the uh, ability to coordinate its action, just like the uh, core muscles. It fatigues prematurely and ends up working also in an inefficient manner. What I'd like to do at this stage of the game is uh, share with you a couple of scientific studies that reinforce the fact that uh, breathing alone can be a viable and strong form of rehabilitation for your back pain. Now, this first study here uh, was published about a year ago. They took about 20 male uh, uh, subjects with chronic low back pain. One group of 10 uh, subjects was assigned to an exhalation exercise group as the experimental group and uh, the other group into a spinal stabilization exercise group. So one group received breathing exercise and the other group received spinal stabilization exercise. Uh, the conclusion reads as follows. The breathing exercise effectively increased muscle activity by training gross and fine motor muscles in the trunk. Moreover, it was verified as a very important element for strengthening body stability because it both released and prevented low back pain. So it helped low back pain, but mostly what it did, it retrained the muscles of the trunk, which is exactly what we're looking for in uh, trying to help people with chronic back pain. The other study was published about uh, uh, 12 years ago. The, in this study, they took 36 patients with chronic low back pain. They received also uh, 12 sessions of either breath therapy or simple physical therapy. The conclusion here reads as follows. Now, patients suffering from chronic low back pain improved significantly with breath therapy. Changes in standard low back pain, measures of pain and disability were comparable to those resulting from high quality extended physical therapy. Bottom line, 
what this is telling us is that breathing therapy is just as efficient as physical therapy alone. So this really corroborates the fact that breathing is a tremendous asset and it's a form of rehabilitation when it comes to uh, back pain. So what I'd like to do in the next segment is demonstrate to you how to use breathing exercises, simple breathing exercise actually that I teach and combine that with uh, static stretching. Believe you me again, it works. I've been doing this for over 15 years and it has helped me a lot. It works, it is simple, it's easy, and it is also free. So there should be no excuse for not trying it out. So let's go to the next uh, segment. Well, hi, and thank you for joining me today. Today we're gonna to be talking about the therapeutic technique of breaching. Breaching is simply a combination of two words, breathing and stretching. Don't go looking for the word in a dictionary, you won't find it yet because I coined the word. Breaching has been the result of many years of uh, back pain and trial and error as well. What I want to do now is uh, basically explain what breaching is all about. Breaching is a combination of static stretching and diaphragmatic breathing. We have already seen that uh, there's two techniques, the one of uh, relaxation breathing and Static stretching are two strong and viable forms of uh, therapy for non-specific back pain. So if you combine the two together, you end up with much better results. Hence, the birth of breaching. What I want to do now is demonstrate what diaphragmatic breathing is all about. So I'm going to lie down here and start. When you breathe in, you breathe in through the nose or through the mouth. But when you breathe out, it's always through the mouth. Let me give you a couple of easy examples. Here, I breathe through my nose, in through my nose and out through my mouth. Now I'm gonna breathe in and out through my mouth. Notice also how the abdomen goes up and down. So in order, in order to give you a better demonstration, I wanna put a book on top of my abdomen right here. When I breathe in, the book will go up. When I breathe out, it will go down. When you breathe in, it usually takes about three to four seconds. When you breathe out, it's about twice as long. The other key is also to pucker your lips together when you blow out. Then when you create a little bit of resistance for the airflow on the way out of uh, the, the mouth. What I'd like to do now is uh, demonstrate a couple of uh, stretches. The first one is the uh, hamstring stretch. Okay, we've seen this one already. So my right knee is bent, my left leg is nice and straight. I'm gonna grab my left leg, pull it back, hold it nice, no movement. I wanna do this for anywhere between 20 to 30 seconds at a time. And pay attention to my abdomen. This is what breaching is all about. We're going to switch sides. Remember to relax. The key is to relax. The more relaxed, the better it works. What happens when you have back pain, your brain is bombarding you with pain signals. So by breathing in a relaxed fashion, you send a message to the brain telling it to completely relax. That way, the pain signals decrease in intensity, duration, and frequency. I'm going to show you another uh, stretch. So what I'm going to do here is uh, a back twister. Switch around. Same thing with the breathing. One to 30 seconds at a time. That's basically what breaching is all about. It's very simple, it's easy. Uh, you can do it 
practice, practice, practice. It is going to help you. I can guarantee you. I've been doing this for many years. I have a lot of patients who do this. They love it. Good luck. It all begins with the act of performing our daily activities with bad posture and poor body mechanics. This is commonly referred to as slouching. As this is repeated enough, it causes the body's core muscles to fatigue prematurely. Inflammation and back pain ensue. This ends up inhibiting the core muscles from properly functioning. As a result, our back muscles will experience microscopic tears, muscular imbalances, and even brain damage such as shrinkage of parts of the brain. As this process is perpetuated, the brain ends up losing the ability to properly coordinate the actions of the core muscles. The reason why most people continue to experience back pain despite the availability of many forms of treatment is because none of these therapies addresses the real cause of back pain. The vicious cycle of back pain can only be broken by dealing with the actual cause of back pain, namely the loss of coordination of the core muscles by the brain. Mr. Ben Habilis, a physical therapist from Huntington Beach, California, came up with an ingenious solution to this chronic problem. It is called the posture saver. The posture saver is a garment that is worn like a vest or a t-shirt. It does the job of a back brace without the unattractiveness and discomfort associated with wearing a back brace. The posture saver has two bands of fabric that surround the shoulders, then connect to two elastic straps in the back. The elastic straps crisscross in the back and end up on two Velcro patches located on the front in the lower abdomen area. By pulling forward on the elastic straps, the shoulders are pulled backwards. This positions the trunk in a perfectly neutral position without any effort. The posture saver is fully adjustable, attractive, and very comfortable to wear. By preventing you from slouching no matter the activity, the posture saver will ultimately retrain your brain to regain the ability to properly control the core muscles, hence breaking the vicious cycle of back pain by dealing with the real cause of back pain. Well, hi, and uh, thanks for joining me again. Uh, well, I'm jumping at the bit to get my crowdfunding campaign started. It's not going to be an easy task without your financial assistance. Last year, I had to undergo three major knee surgeries, two of them being tall knee replacements, so I've ended up with two bionic knees. Since I work as an independent contractor and have access to no benefits, such as uh, disability insurance. I couldn't work for five months, so I had to uh, take a second loan on my house in order to pay my bills. I want to thank you for your uh, interest, and I also hope that my um, instructional video is going to help you as much as it has helped me and also my patients. I also want to express my gratitude to those of you who are going to make a, a financial uh, contribution. Remember, a dollar donation is uh, great. If you decide to donate five dollars or more, that's fantastic. And also if you donate five or more dollars, you are going to be given access to a library of uh, instructional videos. That's over 1,200 videos actually that deal with uh, various aspects of physical therapy and fitness related issues. These videos have been uh, made by uh, a couple of physical therapists who have over 50 years of experience. So basically what you're going to end up with is uh, almost like having full access to a, a physical therapist anytime you wish uh, to. Uh, your uh, act of uh, kindness is going to help somebody somewhere in the near future. Remember that by contributing you're not just helping market the posture saver. What you really are doing is uh, promote a new science-based paradigm in the treatment of back pain. Once again, I want to thank you for your uh, contribution. And remember that by being good to others, you are best to yourself. Have a great day.